In Hollywood, one movie can launch a career. It's something one Coloradan discovered after landing a role in one of Marvel's most popular movie franchises. Abba Arthur, a CU Boulder graduate, was cast in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And it wasn't a big role, but it kicked off a dream Abba's had her entire life. Here is my full extended interview with Abba Arthur. Okay, Abba, we first have to start with right now where we are in this room because we said it is bringing back all the feels. This is where you had your first acting class yes. right here on CU campus. That's correct. In this room, before I got to see you, I always, it's always been in me. I knew that there was something there, but really in this room is where everything came together and I realized what my purpose was. So this is very special to me to be back here. What are you yeah. feeling inside? I feel like I want to cry. <laughs> I just, I just remember being here and feeling very certain, but very lost at the same time, if that's possible. You know, at that age, 18, wow, 18, 19 years old, you know, you don't know where you're going, but I always knew where I was going, if that makes sense. I didn't know how it was going to come together or what. So I think literally being in this space, it's like, I was right about myself. I always knew I was right about myself. So it's just, it really touches my heart. Well, it's giving me chills right now Aww. too. No, it's Thank incredible. You. I mean, obviously this has been a wild year for you. I mean, you hit it really big in one of Marvel's biggest franchises, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Talk to me about what that experience was from getting that role to being on set for the first time. Wow. Um, I was auditioning like I auditioned for anything else. Marvel is notoriously tight-lipped, mm -hmm. so I didn't know what it was that I was auditioning for, but I did my best like always. I ended up booking the role, of course, and I mean, being on set was, how do, we, how do you describe that? I mean, it was just a magical experience, um, a steep learning curve, but professionalism all the way through. So I stepped on set knowing that I was entering this massive franchise and understanding the cultural impact as well. Mm -hmm. So of course, after that, I was just excited to be a part of it. I was excited to, you know, be there. Um, and I went and I shot my little lines and I don't think I knew how excited other people were gonna be that I was in the movie. I was happy it was coming out and I'm a fan, so I was looking forward to seeing it, but the response has been very overwhelming and very humbling, very humbling. Realizing that you are now on the same level as people that, you know, were probably your idols, a lot of our idols, Angela Bassett, Lupita Nyong'o, like so many incredible actors and actresses in the Black Panther franchise. Um, are you seeing, I, you, you, you're a confident woman. You know your worth. You said you, yeah. you always knew where you were going to be. Absolutely. But finally being there, where are you at with that mentally? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm focused. I'm excited. I'm nervous. But most of all, I'm ready. Was there a film or a show, because I know you're, you're a fanatic of, of right. movies and television, as am I. Was there a show or a movie that you watched that maybe kind of got the juices flowing of, yes. I think I want to act? Yes, two in particular. The first one randomly was The Golden Girls. I was just talking about this the other day. So funny story, I was too young to be watching The Golden Girls, okay? And I wasn't supposed to be watching TV. Sorry, mom, sorry. I wasn't supposed to be watching TV, but the reruns would come on and I didn't know what they were talking about, I didn't understand, but I started to pick up the timing. I would see this person would talk, this person would speak, this person would speak, and then this one would get a laugh. And then this one would speak, this one would speak, and then a laugh. So I started to understand comedic timing through the Golden Girls, and I didn't know at that age what was happening, but I was counting. I'd be like, okay, one, two, three, laugh. One, two, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I started to pick up how many jokes were on a page and how that works. Um, and then when I got a little bit older, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, which is still one of my favorite one of my shows. Too. Of course, how mm -hmm. could it not be? The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was the first show I saw where I would watch the show, I would laugh, but I was always writing myself into the show in my mind. So I would watch it and literally I would go upstairs into my room and I would rewrite the episode and find a way to insert myself into the show. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, that's correct. So I would make myself Carlton's long lost girlfriend who came back into town and then it would be the next season and I would see it actually happen. So then I knew, okay, maybe I'm on to something. I'm not too far off. But yeah, those shows, they really shaped how I saw television and how I understood the industry and how I saw myself in it. I mean, not many people can say that. A lot of people aimlessly watch shows and they're not yeah. dialed in to every <laughs> little detail. That's incredible. We, we have to touch on your writing because you've touched on that a bit. That's a huge part, I would say, maybe equally as big as your acting, for is sure. your passion for writing. So share with me a little bit. You, you were just saying things you wrote years ago we're likely going to be seeing. Yeah. 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 That's really special to me. The writing was birthed out of necessity. That I don't think I, I know that I started with it because everything I'm doing now has always been there. I was born with it. Um, I knew I was going to be an actor. I felt it when I walked in this room. The writing came a little bit later because I wasn't getting the meat in the roles that I was looking for. I wasn't seeing myself on television and I wasn't able to really connect to what I was seeing. And so I always knew that piece was in there. I took a couple of creative writing classes while I was in school and then it started to punch up that part of me. And I said, oh, wait a minute, I can just write for myself. What am I doing? So then I, that's when I really started to lean into writing and writing things for myself, yeah. Ava, you talked about seeing yourself. You weren't seeing yourself on television, and that is so incredibly major and important. But now, little girls and boys are seeing you. What would it have meant if you saw more people like you when you were growing up? Oh. It wouldn't have felt so far away. It wouldn't have felt like it was impossible. I would see them on TV, and I would feel like, I know I'm supposed to be there, but I don't know how to get there. I don't know what happens in between me now and me then. And so that's why it's so important for me to be present because I know that somebody else is going to be watching and say, oh, okay, she's where I was and she kind of went out there and figured it out. So any way I can be of assistance to anyone else, I would love to be. There have been changes in Hollywood. We're, yeah. It's slow, it's steady, um, but we're seeing, you know, with this new award season, so many more races are finally being na nominated in categories that they're deserving of, not just because. Absolutely. You're, you know, obviously back and forth, LA, Atlanta, everywhere. Are you seeing more roles being available to you? Like, are you physically seeing that, or do you feel like it's still a really slow drip on opportunity? I feel both ways. I am very grateful for the changes and they're visible. I'm happy to see that and yet we still have so far to go. So I think I feel a little bit of both where I know, I know what television should look like. It should echo what we look like, but um, that's not always the case. So I'm great. I'm happy when I see it. I'm grateful when I see it, but I know there needs to be a lot more. Uh, Angela Bassett, breaking barriers, <sighs> literally history, making history. Yes. The first actor, male or female, for a Marvel film to be nominated for an Oscar. We are so proud. Yes. Um, what yes. was your interaction? What was your interaction like with her at all on set? I didn't have any it interaction didn't. with her. Oh, I, know, so I know. It's coming. Okay. It's coming. It's coming. We're it's manifesting. Coming. Oh, yeah. we're gonna work together. But we're gonna work together. But even just to see like yeah. her getting this nomination in a film that you guys were both Absolutely. in as black women, incredible women. What does that mean? Well, she's always been the pinnacle for me. I mean, the amount of strength, internal and external, you see her guns? Hello? Yes. Internal and external, the amount of strength and focus and control that woman is able to exude in every single character. I've always admired that. I've aspired to be that. So I have been her cheerleader since I knew who she was. So <laughs> to be in a film where my name is in the same category as hers, and then to be able to watch her get this long awaited and so deserved nomination for this award. It's just, I mean, it's mind blowing. I'm so excited. I can't wait till she wins. <laughs> She's gonna win. I mean, 
<laughs> Let's be honest, she already got the Critics' Choice in the uh, Golden Globe, and that's so telling. I it. can't wait to it. see it happen. We need it. We but need it's it. just continuing to pave, pave the path, pave everyone's path for everyone who's to come. We, of course, have a new Little Mermaid live action where they cast a black female for the lead role for Little Mermaid, for Ariel. Yes. You know, you look at all these Disney movies we grew up on, that wasn't the case in these animated films. And now we're, we're seeing little bits of these changes. Um, you talked about there's still a long way to go, but even seeing that, how does, what does that stir inside you? I'm so proud. I'm so proud and I'm so excited. The Little Mermaid has always been my favorite Disney movie. And Halle Bailey is my cast member in The Color Purple coming out in December oh, 2023. She is, she is, she is, she is. So of course to know that this massive film is coming out before our massive film, I'm so excited for her. I'm so excited for us. Like this is, this is a huge step forward, I think for young girls to be able to see this beloved character and see ourselves reflected in her. Halle Bailey has locks in her hair, you know? That's something we can't take for granted. Like, I get to see a Little Mermaid with locks? Whoo! My heart, that gives me chills. So I'm just, I'm thrilled and I can't wait to see it. I know she's gonna do incredible. Yeah, I'm really excited for that one yeah. too. Yeah. Um, if you could take it back to Abba here at CU Boulder, what would you tell her? <sighs> just listen to yourself, tap in, deeply and only listen to that voice. Shut everything else out and walk forward. That's what I tell her. I feel like I always have known, but sometimes the world and the outside influences, even when people are trying to give you advice, sometimes they can only speak from their own experience and their own limitations. And so, the voices sometimes can drown out that silent, still voice. So Abba, that was in this room, I would tell her, listen to yourself, you got it, keep going, keep going. And your message to any young actors, actresses um, like you to maybe thinking, I don't see the opportunity for me. I don't, I don't know if I could ever do that, having any self-doubt. Yeah, I would tell them to create it. You don't have to wait for a seat. The seat's already there. Create it, create it. Tell them who you are, show them who you are because you know who you are. And if you don't figure it out, that's the only way this is gonna work, yeah. All right, you mentioned the color purple. We're so excited. Um, when is the official release date for that? December, oh, okay. We've December got a ways. of 2023, we have a ways, but almost there. But it's a musical, Oprah's yes. adaptation musical. So you yes. sing too. I do. My girl I does do. it all. Do. <laughs> what was that experience like? Where do I start? I don't know, find, find a spot. <laughs> the color purple, I mean, wow. I know almost all the words. I certainly know all the music. So to get the call was, I mean, I just, my knees gave out. I just dropped to the ground. And then being there on set, it was just such a life-changing experience. Um, I felt so much gratitude. I shot on my birthday. Can you imagine? No. And Oprah was there and Gail. What do you mean? Oh. So to just be able to be in that space, not only living in my dream, but to get the okay, to get the nod, first from Ryan Coogler and then from Oprah, to say, no, you got it, you can do this. Um, I, when every time they would yell cut, we would go back to our trailers, I was weeping, full on, we, full on weeping. Again, it was my birthday, it just felt like such a gift. And I still feel that way, I, it, it, was, it was incredible. It was incredible. Do you have an absolute dream role? I have so many. Where do I start? <laughs> I was so grateful to be in Black Panther and it gave me a little snippet of stunts and obviously action and I loved it. That adrenaline is like no other. So I do see myself 
wearing some kind of a cat suit flying through the air. I do see that again. <laughs> and also, I like deeply emotional and very personal conversations. Um, I tend to really lean toward roles that dive into empathy and really being able to understand somebody else's emotion. So as much as I see myself flying through the air, doing stunts and fighting, I also see this kind of connection with someone across the table from me. Angela Bassett, perhaps. I see it. I can see it. <laughs> I see it and I feel it too. You are Thank just you. so incredibly talented and I cannot wait to see what more you continue to do and see some of your own works as well. I feel so much gratitude for all the people that I've been able to work with thus far. I mean heavyweights on these sets and I feel so much gratitude for the way I've been welcomed. For everybody that I've worked with thus far, they've shown me what it looks like to lead on a set. And so I've taken all of that in and I'm gonna take it on every set from this point forth. I'm really grateful for that. Amazing, thank you so much. Thank you.